So previously, we've talked about all sorts of different functions with inputs and outputs, but right up here, we've got a function, but the syntax looks a little bit unfamiliar. What is this arrow anyways? Previously, we said that this line of code is equivalent to basically writing something like this. We have a function that's called main, and inside this function, we carry out a single instruction, which is to run our app. And the app that we want to run is our xylophone app right here. And once that run app is done, then we have our semicolon to cap off the line. And this is exactly the same as what we had before. But what is that arrow and what does it do? Well, the arrow, which we create using a equal sign and a right angle bracket, angle bracket, in dot is known as the arrow syntax. And you might hear other people referring to it as a fat arrow to distinguish it from a slim arrow, I guess. But the arrow syntax is used when the function body, so the part that's inside the curly braces, right after the name of the function, where this part is only a single line of code. Heading back to a dart pad so I can show you how this works. Let's say that we have our add function, which returns an integer. And all that it does is it adds the numbers five plus two, and then it returns five plus two as the output, which is going to be seven. And inside our main function, all that we do is we create an integer variable, which is called result, and we set it equal to the output of our add function. Now, clearly at this point, if we print our result, we'll just get seven printed in the console right here. Five plus two equals seven. That becomes the result over here. And so result equals seven. And when we print this line, this is what we get. Now we can also represent this function because it only has a single line of instructions. We can also use our arrow syntax. So we can write int add and after the parentheses, we can add our arrow and we can omit the word return, but simply give the expression or what it needs to do. So this is exactly the same to the computer as this. And if I comment this out and I click run again, you'll see that when it calls add, it's going to use this version and it does exactly the same thing. So that arrow syntax is equivalent to having the curly braces around whatever comes after. And it also is equivalent to having that return keyword in front of this line of syntax. Now, remember the arrow syntax only works if you have a single line of instructions. So for example, you can't, for example, have a print statement here as well. Print, I got called. So now this function has two lines and we can't combine that into the end of our arrow syntax. So we can't, for example, put it here and try to run both lines. If I go ahead and comment this out and click run, you can see that I get all sorts of errors. So I'm only allowed a single line expression. But using the arrow syntax, I can still have inputs inside here. So for example, if I didn't want to add a uh, five to two every single time, which is a bit of a useless function if you think about it, let's try and add our n1 to our n2 and we return simply n1 plus n2. Now, in the arrow syntax version, we will represent this in much the same way. Inside the parentheses after the word add, we add our inputs in exactly the same way. So I'm just gonna copy and paste it in there. And then after the arrow, we place our single line of instructions, which is basically just n1 plus n2. So this also works, and this is exactly the same 
as this line of code. So if we added our numbers, let's say let's add three to 11, hit run, you can see that our function using the arrow syntax returns the number 14, which gets printed in here. So now if we head back to Android Studio, we can see that using the same principles, we can get rid of our curly braces. And even though in this case, this function doesn't actually return anything because it has a void data type, we can still use that arrow syntax to say that this is the body of this function. This is the single line of instructions which needs to be carried out when this function gets called, which is simply to run the app that is our xylophone app. So next time, when you see this arrow syntax, you won't be confused as to what it does anymore. And after this module, hopefully you now have a good grasp of how packages work in Flutter, how we can import other people's code into our own projects and leverage the coverage, the code that they've already written to give our apps more functionality without having to write a lot more code. We've also explored how functions work in all three flavors in Dart, and we've built out a music app, which is created using one of these functions that we learned about. So that's all from me, and I'll see you on the next module.